Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at this 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from ADC Bat. This battery is advertised as having low temperature charge protection. It seems to have pretty much every feature and functionality that we look for in lithium iron phosphate batteries. So we'll do the usual overview of features, capacity test, and a teardown to see how it's built. Uh, two batteries in two days, here we go. Very standard case as we've seen with other batteries before. Uh, this is very similar to the Lion Energy and the Basson battery, have the same enclosures. Not a whole lot to see on the front, we just have the brand name, the battery rating, and then we have a support contact if you need assistance. We have a lot of technical information printed on the top of the battery. I do like seeing this. Many of the batteries we review have very limited information on the actual battery themselves. So it is 12.8 volt as I mentioned, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hours. The continuous ratings are a 20 amp recommended charge and a 50 amp maximum charge. A 100 amp discharge and a 200 amp discharge for up to 3 seconds. We can connect up to 4 of these batteries in series for a 48 volt configuration. And you can see this does contain UL1642 listed cells. And then in the upper right here we just have some temperature parameters. Uh, the terminals are the standard uh, the terminals are the standard epoxied in posts. They are the standard M8 bolt that we've seen on many batteries before. And here's a look at the M8 bolts that were supplied with this battery. They are a little shorter than some of the others we have received, but there is plenty of room to fit a lug or two underneath. Uh, we've also received a product manual. It's very short. There are only four pages to it, three pages here. We've got a list of precautions. Uh, just your typical specifications, everything we have read already. This is rated for 3,500 cycles with a 100% depth of discharge and over 8,000 cycles with a 50% depth of discharge. So this should have a very long lifespan. And we see some charge and discharge specifications here. I do see it says that the low voltage disconnect is 10.8 volts. But then down in this table here it's showing that is the recommended disconnect and 0% is actually 9.5 volts. So I'm going to guess the BMS will cut off at 9.5 and uh, perhaps 10.8 volts is what they're recommending you set your inverter or uh, whatever discharge appliance you are using to. And just some information on the series and parallel connections. And they very clearly say this is not suitable for starting gasoline engines. That is one question I still get asked occasionally uh, despite having an entire video on the topic now. we're charging at just over 41 amps. All right, so I've got my standard battery test set up here, which is the battery goes through this Batrium shunt, which is connected to a Watchmon 5 off camera. That BMS is sending data to this tablet so we can see voltage, amperage, wattage, discharged capacity in amp hours, and discharged power in watt hours. Our test load is a 12 volt inverter connected to a series of incandescent light bulbs. As usual, the goal of this test is to get a 0.2C discharge rate. On a 100 amp hour battery, we want to see approximately 20 amps. So there we go, we're just over 300 watts and just under 23 amps. We'll leave this test run until the BMS in this battery shuts it down. Alright guys, so this test did just shut down, however it was the inverter that shut down first. The BMS in this battery did not disconnect. Um, you can see we're sitting at 107 amp hours, which is quite incredible for a 100 amp hour battery pack. However, I do want to make sure that the low voltage disconnect in this battery works. Uh, so I'm going to plug in this 12 volt, uh, just an electric heater here, heating element, and let it run down this battery a little bit more to see if we can trigger low voltage disconnect. Here we go. It's not putting too much of a load on this battery, only uh, 11 and a half amps. Um, but yeah, we'll let this run down and just make sure this low voltage disconnect actually does work. All right, so I did get the BMS to trip using that uh, resistive heater, and uh, that gave us a final capacity of 107.9 amp hours. That's almost 8 amp hours over the advertised capacity of this battery. All right, so like many batteries we've torn apart, this is glued the whole way around again. So we're going to use the putty knife method, which has been working very well to get these apart with minimal damage. Wow, that's a pretty thick conductor there. BMS is kind of just slapped on there. It's not really, I mean, I suppose it's fine, but it just kind of doesn't look cleanly built, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. All right, so our negative conductors here, we have three 
number 10 wires coming from the battery to the BMS, and then three number 10 wires coming from the BMS to the main terminal. For the positive lead here, I did cut and remove some of this heat shrink. The entire wire is wrapped in heat shrink, which is kind of interesting. And I did verify this is a number four gauge uh, silicone insulated wire. So that's, that's pretty thick. I actually haven't seen many of these batteries with number four inside before. Alright, so we can see here uh, they do have a temperature sensor coming off of this BMS and it's stuck right to the side of the battery where it should be. And that is a proper temperature sensor. Look at that. Alright, so here's a look at the top of the battery. You can see the BMS leads come down here in spiral wrap. They are zip tied down to the top of the cells. Um, additionally, each individual wire has a piece of spiral wrap going around it. I can't imagine how long it took them to put that on. And that is some pretty good looking wire too. It's not the cheap wire you typically see. And the balance leads are terminated with ring terminals. They are soldered on and there's heat shrink over them. So we've got a nut, we've got a split lock washer, then we've got the ring terminal, and then we've got a flat washer pressed on there. So they do look like decent cells. I do see a little bit of space between them here. So they are not 100% flat, unfortunately. Um, you can see down here a little bit too, there is some space. So there has been a little bit of expansion on the cells. I don't know that I would call it bad, but it is worth noting. Here's a look at the QR code. I do believe these are Goshen brand cells. Not 100% certain on that, but I have seen Goshen cells with a similar QR code. Alright, so I did go and look online and uh, these are indeed Goshen brand cells. However, I could not find what the rate of capacity was. I'm going to guess they're either 100 or 105 amp hours. In either case, we have exceeded the rated capacity in our capacity test. Uh, so I pulled the main positive off so we can take a look at the stud here. Uh, this stud is laser welded onto the top of the battery. The laser weld looks like it's done very well. I have no concerns about that. With how close these cells are together here, this does make me very, very nervous to work on though. Look how there's hardly any space here preventing these from shorting out. If I even as much as drop this balance lead the wrong way, the balance lead is wide enough to create a short between here. So, And one thing I did want to point out that I didn't note is that they do have epoxy board between all of these cells and they are fixed in place with two wrappings of this fibrous strapping tape. Alright, so taking a look at this BMS here, I do not see a brand name, at least not in English. However, this is model number HY7100 and we can see it is rated for 100 amps. Alright, so the last test here is the low temperature charge protection. You can see the eye charger is charging at 5 amps. Got a glass of frozen salt water here with some orange colored rock salt mixed in. Uh, so this should be more than cold enough to trigger this. Oh, that was almost instant. Look at that. That was so cool. Charging at 5 amps. We'll do this in real time here, no editing. Instant. That was maybe 2 seconds. That is pretty cool. Alright guys, so I have very mixed feelings on this battery. Uh, it did pass our capacity test with flying colors. It checked in at almost 108 amp hours. The low temperature charge protection is flawless. You can see how quickly it shut down once it went below zero. That sensor was properly affixed to the side of the battery. The wiring is all of the appropriate gauges. A number, a number four wire for the positive. I haven't seen a uh, four gauge in one of these smaller batteries before. However, I'm just not 100% sold on the choice of Goshen cells, and it kind of seems like everything is just stuck in there. And of course, that probably doesn't matter as much as long as this battery tests at the rate of capacity and meets all the advertised functions. This battery does sell for $380. There is a 3% discount code, which you can find down in the video description. That will bring it down to approximately $369. And that price is exactly the same as the Lossagy battery we reviewed yesterday. And I do feel the Lossagy was a little bit better in terms of build quality and craftsmanship. But again, everything checks out functionally with this battery. Yeah, let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.